Good morning, philosophers. We are here to look at three terms today, and uh, I'm not entirely sure that it's worth a video because it's just really just three words, uh, but they're important three words for, for American philosophers. Uh, almost all Americans, well, I won't say almost all, a large number of Americans are monotheists, and we did monotheism from the last unit. That means you, means you believe in one God. Uh, so a monotheist believes in one deity, one supreme power. Uh, and a lot of people in America talk about how well, America was founded by Christians, which isn't entirely true because some of our founding fathers like Jefferson were actually deists uh, and deism is kind of like a it's a, a branch of monotheism uh, and so what what Jefferson and some of these uh, these early deists they had decided was that okay there's there has to be a god uh, this all they didn't understand uh, the theory of evolution yet so they assumed that the world was created by some kind of power some kind of deity uh, but they looked around at the world, you know, I think when, when America was being founded, you know, the world was not a super happy place. When has it ever really been a super happy place? So they look around and they said, well, God may have created this, but he's not here now, you know, and he may have been involved early in the founding of man. Um, but he, we don't we don't see any evidence of him now. So the idea of deism is that there is a supreme being that created the universe, but then he just bailed. You know, he he was here, made the universe, brought the universe into existence, uh, and then he sort of is letting us work. You know, to, left us to our own devices, um, like like it was just some show, and God set the show up, and now he's just sitting back watching. Uh, so that's the idea of deism. And I think a lot of people, uh, when they discover deism, they realize, oh my God, that's what I, that's what I think. I just didn't realize it. I think God has left us to our own and is waiting to see what we do. Um, and then another one that we're doing is, is pantheism. And pantheism, there's a lot of Christians that are pantheists and they don't even know it. Um, pantheism is the idea that God isn't some like being, like this guy that walks around in heaven. God is this force in the universe. This, look, if you look around at the universe, look, there, all of that, that's God. God is the world. Um, so when you die, you don't go to heaven somewhere else. You become, this is a very Buddhist idea, you become one with God. You become one with nature and one with the universe, uh, and that's pantheism. So in pantheism, they, if you look at on the uh, the the description thing in the the uh, module, uh, there's an image, and it shows under pantheism there's a circle, and it says God and the world because that circle represents the world, but that circle also represents God. Uh, there's not some God like a Euler diagram. There's not some God somewhere else. God is the universe, uh, and one of the one of the most famous critics, although it, of pantheism, although it's, I think it's kind of a silly criticism of it, is the idea that if if pantheism is true, if God is the universe, then a whale is more godly than you are because a whale is bigger, and if it's bigger, then it's got more God in it. Um, silly, but it, it kind of a uh, it helps you understand what it means to be a pantheist. Uh, and then evolving out of that, sort of a, a step beyond pantheism is panentheism. Panentheism is the idea that yes, God is the world, but there is also this other world, you know, like Plato's world of forms. There's this other uh, plane of existence that's like God's other house, his like summer home. Uh, so there is God as a being, an entity that you can go up and walk, walk up to and talk to um, in this other universe. But here on our universe, God is the world. Um, so we get this idea of God being in the world and being somewhere else uh, simultaneously. And um, so a lot of people... They, they have these people that don't delve into philosophy. They have like very basic monotheist theistic ideas, and they never really consider what it means to believe in God and what is God to you. Um, because if you're going to defend the existence of God, and if you're going to believe in Him, you better be able to defend His existence. But if you're going to defend the existence of God, you need to have a very clear idea of what God is, so that you can defend that. Uh, we talked about. Um, which view would be easiest and hardest to defend. And a lot of students have said that agnosticism is the easiest to defend. Um, and I, I would argue that's just simply just totally wrong. Agnosticism isn't defending anything. You can't say agnosticism is easiest to defend if they don't defend anything. And that's the problem with agnosticism. They just say, oh, I don't know. And they leave it at that. Oh, we'll never know. And to me, you can't even say you believe. You can't even say you don't believe if you're agnostic. Um, and they're, to me, that's just avoiding the question. Um, so I, I think monotheism is, is worth looking at and trying to defend. Uh, and that's what we're going to do in the rest of this unit.